We're now joined by Statistician General of the Federation and CEO of the Na National Bureau of Statistics, Adeyemi Adeniram. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Adeniram. Let's just get right into it. Since this early afternoon that this uh, launch of this report dropped, it's undeniable that Nigerians have been a bit confused. The last they heard about unemployment rates in Nigeria two years ago, 33%. Now it's 4.1%. You say it's based on a new methodology. The methodology that was used before, it's no longer used anymore. What's this new methodology? And does it capture the reality of unemployed uh, Nigerians? Uh, good evening. Thank you, Nigerians. Good evening, Nigerians. Thank you for having me. Yes, the new methodology that we have captured the unemployment situation in Nigeria. Uh, and it gives us a broad perspective of what labor market statistics is in the country. Uh, as I said in my speech during the launch, uh, there is no need to say unemployment dropped from 33.3 to 4.1. I want to disabuse the people's mind uh, that you don't, we, we are not saying that it dropped from 33.3 to, uh, to 4.1, because if you say that, it means that there has been some uh, improvement, improvement yeah. in the economy that absorb people that now made unemployment to go down. It's not that. We are not comparing the two. So don't bring in 33 into the discussion when we want to talk about this new methodology because they are not comparable. They are not having the same base and they are not calculating the indicators the same way. So before, uh, the... Uh, working age population is between 15 to 64 years which is only uh, in Nigeria that we are using that and maybe one or two other countries but all our neighboring countries uh, Ghana, Togo, Republic of Guinea, Cameroon they are not using 15 to 64 because that is an old uh, standard that is set by ILO that Nigeria is a signatory to that convention the ICLS 19th, which was adopted in 2018. So it was based on the hold methodology that we are capping the age at uh, 64. When it came to reality that people work after the age of 64 and they contribute immensely to the economy of the country. And we are saying that all those contributions from those people at above that age bracket of 64, we are not capturing them as being engaged, as being employed. So we came together all over the world and said, this can no longer be sustained. We need to change it. And other countries have adopted, about 26 African countries, they have adopted that new methodology over the years. I can say that Nigeria is coming behind to adopt it by this time. So now what we have is 15 years and above. When we say 15 years and above, people are saying, is it to infinity? When we want to calculate unemployment, it's not everybody that is inside that calculation. If you are 64 years and we ask you, are you looking for a job? You say no. If you see job, are you going to do? You say no. You are not going to be part of that calculation. So if, if you are not up to 64, 65, if you are 28 years, if you are 35 years and we ask you, are you looking for a job in the last seven days, which is the reference period? You last seven are, days. Yes. Okay. That's the reference period anyway. Right. right. That's the standard. Yeah. So you say you are not looking for a job. If you see job, are you ready to do? You say you are not ready to work. You are not available for work. And you are not searching for work. If you are calculating our unemployment, you are not going to be part of the people that we use for that computation. So you are out of labor force. Okay. It's when you are within the labor force that you say, I've been searching, I cannot get. If I see, I will do then you are actually looking for work to do. Okay. Then you'll be part of the people that we are going to use to compute unemployment rate. I so understand. when we say 50 to, uh, 15 and above, it doesn't mean everybody, uh, 101 years, we now bring them in and say we are calculating unemployment. No. But, I hope but, you get that. Yeah, right. But then, uh, so I understand where you're coming from. Able-bodied people yes. who are employable yes. but not looking for job would not be part of the calculation. You, you, you don't want to get... I get that, uh, I get that absolutely. Yeah. But then, uh, have you thought of the fact that 
if you put uh, the the people that we consider unemployed are the teeming population, the teeming youth, yes, not the people uh -huh. above sixty four, yeah. sixty five. Yeah. So if you if that's what you are factoring in, if that's what the NBS is factoring in to say that uh, the unemployment rate has is uh, four point one percent, uh, is that not a little confusing still? Because we really do not bother. I don't think Nigerians are bothered about those who are over 64 and are not working. We are particular about those who are below 64, as a matter of fact, youthful age bracket, who are not working. Yes. The data captured them, those age 15 to 24. So if you remove the people who are above 64, do we still have 4.1%? If we remove the people that are above, uh, so we won't have 4.1 and we won't have 5.3. What, would we have, but what are we likely to have? What is, what is unemployment? What is labor statistics? Labor statistics is to capture all forms of works that are done in the country by right. anybody. So you don't say remove uh, 64 and above. You don't remove it because they are part of the economy. And what labor force survey is doing is to capture anybody that is doing any form of work. So where the issue can come up is the work that people are doing. One, is it the kind of work they want to do? Then, is it the number of hours they want to work that they are able to get? Is it the kind of money they want to receive that they are getting? These are the information that are available within the data that can be used for policy making. People are working in what area, in which sector? People are looking for work. Where do you want to work? People are having qualifications that they cannot get jobs to do. Where can we look at sectors that are absorbing people? I encourage that sector to take more. These are data that are a uh, series of information that are available within the data that we need to be looking at, not issue of uh, one hour. Uh, you said you peg it at one hour. When we say one hour, do we say if you work one hour in a week, don't work again? That's not what we are saying. Before, if you work three hours, five hours, we are not going to even consider you. But that five hours, you may be earning maybe 20 20 million more than Before somebody yeah. that work more than that. So when we say one hour, we didn't say authoritatively that anybody that work for one hour in Nigeria, stop that person within the week. Don't let the person work again. But we are saying that any work that you do, in any case, Nigeria are hardworking people. You can hardly see anybody that will work one hour in a week and still have opportunity to do more work, more hours of work. And then sit down and say, they say it's one hour. I'm not doing anything again. Which, 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 which uh, data or authority uh, we say? Uh, wait. Okay. Well, yeah, go on. <laughs> Please, yeah. <laughs> uh, just before Kitty comes in again, I'm not done with it. There, there's, there's something I want to bring out. Yes, bring it out. I appreciate the fact that uh, those who are over 60, 64 are part of the statistics. Yet again, we know that those who really contribute to the economy are not of that age. We all know that. Yes. So uh, what percentage of those who are above 60, not even 64, those who are above 60, uh, do we have in the unemployment bracket? And what percentage of those who are below 60 do we have between 15 and 60? Because it's important to really know the age bracket that's contributing to the economy. To the economy. So the age bracket that is contributing to the economy are between 15 to 34. So the data is not saying anything contrary. The data is not saying 64 years and above are the most that are contributing. But what we are saying here is this. Anybody that is engaged in an activity, is it not good for us to cover them so that we have a broad and holistic way uh, in information about what is happening in the labor market? That is the only way government can be able to plan properly. Mm -hmm. If they don't have information, they won't be able to plan. Right. So if, if you want to uh, 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 do maybe social security for elderly people, or you want to plan, we have... Uh, a senior citizen commission, they want to work for those people and there is no information about them. They right. won't be able to do anything. Right. They have always been coming to us to give them data about elderly people, those that have retired, what are they doing, what is the kind of life they are living. So we need to have information about everybody yeah. in the country. So we know that the youth, number one, they are the one that are looking for jobs, that are so many. And the unemployment rate that we have indicated that, that unemployment rate is highest among age 15 to uh, 24, as well as 25 to 34. 
these are the prime age of the youth that we are talking about, and they have the highest proportion of people that are in employment, not the people at the C4. But for us at the National Bureau of Services, using this new methodology, we are glad that we are able to cover everybody that have been missed out before. Mm -hmm. so, so basically, it's a, uh, it's a very inclusive data that we have now. Yeah, the NBS has basically just thrown a wide basket to capture <laughs> everybody that's engaged in any sort of, of work. Activity. On so any sort of activity. activity. So that is the basic thing. And so those activities that they're engaged in, does it all contribute to the economy? <laughs> Are they all making profits? Are they all living all right. above poverty th line? Th thank you. What kind of work, or are they just the working poor, basically? Right. Okay, let, let me just drive it to with uh, an example. Uh, a lecturer, professor at university, they, they, they retire them at the age of 70. Justice, they retire them at the age of 70. So if they are 65, 68, you say they are not contributing to the economy. Uh, can we say they are not contributing no, to the economy? No, it depends on the percentage. I say, we're, no, 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 not percentage. percentage. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, see, I don't want to be mentioning name. I have somebody that has the one of the best private universities in Nigeria. He works, it's, it's about 80-something years now. Maybe if I'm giving age, you will know the person. He works mm -hmm. only four hours in a day. He will just go to his office, they will bring five, he will sign, he will do uh, all the administrative work. And this person is a multi-millionaire. And he has the best private school in the country. So he's not contributing. That's one. My, uh, a, a, a close person in my, in my community, uh, when I was in Lagos, it's about 70 years as at that time, he's into auctioneer. He will be at home when everybody is going to work. He goes out around 1 p.m. And when we come back by 5 p.m., he's already at home. And he's the owner of the house where I'm staying. He has children that has graduated. So, so these, these, these are the things that we are not capturing before that are eluding us. And now we are bringing them on board. It, it shouldn't be any issue. That, that's one. Number two, this methodology that we are talking about, this agrab guy that we are talking about, is not peculiar to Nigeria. This is what is done everywhere. Go and check the data for West African countries and other African countries, and even outside the continent of Africa. There is nowhere, that's why I say I don't want to hear 33 points, something, whatever. There is nowhere you see that kind of figure. Why? Why are we having 1.4, 3.2 in other countries that are surrounding us with the same type of economy? When and we, we are talking about 30 something. We understand that other countries are using this um, standard f that's a standard for international labor organization. And I don't think it's an issue. Okay. It's just more of clarification. Okay, okay. Nigerians need to know what's this new methodology? Okay. Why do we have these figures? And now just talking about the sample size yeah, that has yeah. been used. I know before it was 33,000. 33, now it's 35,520. Yeah. For... Uh, about 200 million uh, people. Is yeah. that enough? Yes. It's enough. Yeah. How so? So for sample size calculation in statistics, uh, we are not population commission. Population commission do census. We are the capture all the element of the population. For us, we do sample survey. That is taking a sample from the population in a systematic manner, in a, in a, in a in a statistical way to arrive at an estimate that will represent that population. Let me give you a simple analogy to know whether that sample is good enough or not. If you have a pot of soup that you have cooked, and you want to check whether the salt is good enough in that soup, are you going to drink all the soup before you know that the salt is okay? You are going to take a small spoon and stir it very well. As long as you stir it very well and take a scoop of spoon and put it and check, you will know whether the soup is, uh, the salt is okay or not. You don't have to drink everything. So it's not only when we have gone to uh, a very big uh, sample size that that is our own work. Yes, we have we the have technique by which we, we yeah. select them and it will be representative of the, we have all the calculation. 
for 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 and that we are going to attach that so that people can see they can follow it and see that it's transparent it's not something that we just do uh that cannot be shown so, so they, we have all the calculation yeah. that we have used and before it's good we for people that. to see it and right. to understand yes. how we arrive at this figure at this figure, the, people, the sample size the mass is the reality in their head it's like look we are all unemployed at this point. <laughs> so they don't really understand oh. when they see the figures, which is let, why let we me, have you here too. Sorry, please. No, let, let me keep let, let me keep 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 let me let me keep 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 let me if uh, they, because the director is already uh, signaling that. Okay. Uh, can you just let us know in a few seconds if the employment market has grown in Nigeria? Whether it has grown? Yeah. Uh, the employment market. I, I cannot say whether it has grown. We need to see the trend now. You know, you just have first quarter 2022, uh, fourth quarter 2022, and now first quarter 2023. We are already almost concluded data collection for the second quarter of this year. So when we have the trend, then we'll be able to say that employment sector or unemployment situation is growing or is not growing. For now, with this new methodology, we don't have enough uh, data to show that. For all right, now. that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us for some clarification on Newsnight. That's uh, Adeyemi Adenura, Statistician General of the Federation. Mm -hmm.